In this video series, we'll be doing a sculpting workflow with the goal of creating game assets. We'll start off with a simple sculpt of a plank and we'll learn how to sculpt it. And then very basic retopology, baking textures and exporting to Unity. And if this series is a success, then we'll continue to more advanced models. In this episode, we'll be looking at the basics of sculpting and I'm assuming a basic knowledge of Blender. So make sure you check out the beginner tutorials on this channel if you haven't got that. Otherwise, let's start. Okay, so here we are with the basic startup file and I'm gonna use the basic cube. So let's resize it first. Scale by the X, scale by the Y, I'll scale by the Z, bring it down, and scale by the X and bring it out. It's a very thick plank of wood, so scale by the Z a little bit more. And there we go. Got a plank of wood. Maybe a tiny bit longer, about there. So we want to set this up for sculpting. The first thing you want to do is reset the scale because you may have rotated yours. We've certainly scaled it, so Control A and set the scale, and you might as well set the rotation and scale. And if I press N to get this panel, you can see that my scale is set to 1, 1, 1. And that's what we need. If I undo that reset, you can see the scale is set to 4.5, 1, blah, blah, blah. And if I went in here to try and reset it, so 1, 1, and you can see my cube is going back to normal. So I want to undo that. And that's why we need to reset the scale here. So it's reset to 1, and it thinks this is its natural scale. Then when we go across the sculpting, we won't have any problems. So we're almost ready to go to sculpting, but there's one thing I want to do. If you go into edit mode with tab, and I want to make sure that I have nice topology to sculpt on. If I go to sculpt mode now, sculpt mode, set up dime topo, and start sculpting, it does pretty well. It's not really a problem, so you could do that. But occasionally, if you've got a more complex shape, and you try and go up too high a detail to start with, it can distort your mesh. It's not doing it here, it's doing a great job, so we could just go straight into sculpting. But I'm gonna show you how to do this in a clean way. So back to edit mode, this is what you should see. And I like to put some loop cuts in, it's quite quick, Control R, and then use your wheel mouse to bring some loop cuts in, and some loop cuts there. And what we're trying to do is make squares, roughly. I mean, there's slight rectangles there, but that will do nicely. Okay, so I'm ready to go into sculpt mode now. Sculpt mode, and I can start sculpting. Now there's a couple of ways of sculpting. One is called a multi-resolution modifier, and the other is Dyn Topo. If we try and sculpt this at the moment though, we can't change our mesh much. It's very blocky, and I'm trying to paint on it, but it doesn't look great. You can really see the topology there sticking out and we need to go a lot more detailed. That's where you have either a multi-resolution modifier or the Dyn Topo. So I'm gonna show you the Dyn Topo. Let's tick on that. The default is 12 here. And there's two types of workflow within Dyn Topo. There's relative detail and constant detail. I never use brush detail, so I'm not gonna even talk about it. Constant detail is what I use the most, and it keeps a constant detail throughout your mesh wherever you sculpt as opposed to relative detail, that when you zoom in, you create more topology. I'll show you relative detail now. So we're on 12, and if I start sculpting, I have symmetry turned on, that's why it's appearing over there. And then go into edit mode, you can see it's created more detail here. Let's turn this down. Detail level is in pixels, so you turn it down in order to get more detail, which can be a bit confusing. So I'm creating more detail here, and in edit mode, now you can see there's more detail. But because it's relative detail, if I zoom in here, it's creating even more topology, as you can see. So it's more detailed topology and more faces. So zooming in and out will affect the amount of faces it adds. If I zoom right out like this, back to sculpt mode, and start sculpting, it puts it back to where it was which you have to watch out for a little bit when using the relative detail, especially if you've got subdivide collapse on. I'll go into these settings more later in the series, but for now I want to keep on constant detail because that's relatively easy to understand 
and nice and easy to sculpt with. At the moment the resolution is 3 so when I sculpt on here it's brought it back to this detail level. I can't remember what this is measured in but uh, the higher the number the higher resolution. So if I turn this up to 7 and start painting now you can see into edit mode I've got more faces. So let's undo all that, go back to the start and let's have constant detail at around 10 and see what that looks like. That's great, that's a nice starting point. So I'm going to undo that line. Now down here you have symmetry tools and you've got symmetry and lock. Try not to get confused between the two. You've got the mirror, the lock and tiling. I don't use tiling but I do use the lock and the mirror. And I need to turn the mirror off in the x-axis because that means it's mirroring across here like we saw earlier. If I paint here it will... You can see what I did there. I pressed the lock instead of the mirror and that's a common mistake so just be aware of that. Uh, the mirror and paint and you can see it appearing over there. Undo both those. I do however want it to mirror this side to this side so that's the z-axis. So if I untick x, click on z and paint you can see it appearing in both. Then I only need to do one side. Okay, so now we're ready to start sculpting. I'll undo that. I'll go through the brushes as we go, but quite simply, F is to resize your brush, like this, and you can see the size changing over here. So F as I resize, and obviously you can change it here as well. These icons here are for pen pressure, so you should be able to press lightly and have less strength. I'll just pull these out so we can see the menus, and press hard for more strength. It can be helpful to press front faces only so that you don't affect any faces in the background. And we're on add. If you click subtract, then obviously it pushes in rather than out. But we want to keep it on add. So that's the draw brush. There's many brushes in here, but that's the one I'm going to go through first. The only other thing I'm going to point out now, so if we paint normally, we paint a line. And if I hold down control and paint, it will dig inwards as you can see there. So I'll undo those strokes. And lastly, if you hold down shift, it smooths things out. Now our topology is quite low at the moment, so it's not really ready for that. And we need to increase the detail level. So I'll undo that. What's really nice about constant detail is that down here you can do a detailed flood fill. So if I press that now, it will flood fill it with the resolution of 10. So now if I smooth out by holding shift, you can see there's more topology there for me to smooth and it's smoothing out as I would hope. So let's smooth out the edges just a touch. Just a bit, we'll smooth them out a bit more later when we've got some more detail. Okay, so for a wood texture, I actually want wood grain going up and down. I have a few reference images, I'll just quickly show you those. I like to use Pinterest to collect reference images. I generally use PureRef to Put the images onto and I'm making another video for that so there will be a card in the corner and a link in the description. So just a few reference images. This is the main one that I'll go by I think because I want a cartoony style with some realistic elements and that looks great. So let's put that back on my other monitor. So in order to get the grain effects I think a different brush that I'm going to introduce is the crease brush just here. So same sort of thing but this time we're creating creases rather than adding topology. So its natural starting point is actually subtract rather than add. So if I draw a line with this now, you can see it's creating creases. And it's set up quite nicely, so I'm going to go in and create simple creases. And I'm going to do a bit of a loop there for a knot. And you can see already we're creating a reasonable wooden plank. Let's mess up the ends by firmly drawing over them. So I'm firmly drawing in here. I can actually up the strength a touch and creating this sort of worn plank. The bigger I make my brush, the bigger effect it will have. So I'm keeping my brush fairly small. And I've got my left hand over my keyboard so I can quickly undo any strokes that are undesirable. The other button that's really useful is Alt F and that will center wherever your mouse is. So Alt F here and it'll move me over there. Alt F here moves me over there. 
I'm using the shift click to smooth edges out that I'm not happy with. Areas like this, it creates a crease so it brings them together. So I might want to go back to my draw brush and hold control and paint to create a bigger dent. So I'll do a similar thing here. So I created a crease, but the more I create a crease, it just pulls it together more and warps the topology. But if I use the draw brush, hold down control and paint, you can see it brings it in. Not that happy with that at the moment, so I'll bring that back out and just create a smaller dent there. And one there. So we've got the very basics of a wooden shape. I might create some notches in it as well. So get this draw brush again and cut into it here like this. And maybe around the corner here. Alt F to center and cut into it here. With the mirror turned on in the z-axis you can see it appearing there as well and i want to come up over here i think alt f to recenter put a notch in here and then go back to my crease brush just sort of put a crease so it's like it's been hacked a bit just there as well of course with my tablet i've got it set up with the middle click on my pen main click and then I can hold that down and move around, and hold control to move in and out. So the main pen button, or button one on my pen, is middle click. And my back button is actually, the button two on my pen is right click. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. That's the first detail level. And I'm gonna pause there. And in the next video, we're gonna be going up a detail level to create our amazing plank. Okay, see you in the next episode, and thanks for watching.